Hi, it's Anne from The Useless Crafter. Okay, so I'm so excited about this project because it's so stinking cute. I will have to admit, it took a long time. There are lots of parts to this. It's all easy, so we'll take it one step at a time. We will use images from Cricut, which is here. This is from Design Space. Um, so I'll leave it here for a minute while I explain everything so that you can write all these down. But this is what it looks like. It's so cute. So it's a shaker, right? So there's all the sequins. There's the tooth and the tooth looms. Hold on, sorry. The tooth looms back and forth. My candy spins. Okay. This envelope. I love this envelope because it has a string and it has a little thing to wrap it around to keep it closed. So, um, you know, you can put... Maybe you can put the money from the tooth fairy there or a note, whatever, but you can write the note in there and then it closes up. Um, I just, I love it. It's just everything so cute. So it's a lot for us to do. I will admit that. So we will do that in a second. I'm going to show you how to do the whole thing. I just did the video on how to put this together and that took, that took a hot minute. So <laughs> this whole project, it will take a lot of work. But it's, I mean, I just love it. So I'm going to go over a couple of things. So this envelope, this is an envelope from Design Space. I punched a hole here. So I didn't do it originally in Design Space. But so right here, right over here, actually, we should cut a hole and just have the Cricut cut it while it's cutting the envelope. Okay. But the hole, then I tied this string and then I glued the tooth on top so that there's something holding it and so it's stable and it can um, it can maintain its integrity through the years as you use this to open and close. This is just like a little piece of ceramic thing that I bought on Amazon. Um, it is really cute. It's a unicorn on an ice cream cone which kind of fit in with the theme. Um, so there's that. Um, and I'm going to show you the anatomy of an actual shaker. Okay, so I have that here. Um, what you need is, first of all, this is my template. I had my friend turn it into an SVG so that you can buy it for a dollar on Creative Fabrica. I'll show you what that looks like in a second, okay? But basically what it is, is it's this is the back of the shaker. So this is the pink layer that you see here. It is not the green layer. The green layer is just an extra whatever design that you want to put on the back. It just makes it more fancy. But this is the back of the shaker, okay? Then what you do is you put your foam here. You glue down your foam, and this creates a wall, like an enclosure for your sequence. You're going to dump all your sequence in there, okay? You're going to put a layer of acetate on top. Then this is the back of your slider. This is the top of your slider. So it has this little open slit right here, okay? And that slit is so that you can have a piece like this. This is a perler bead on top, glued to just the same material as this, just a little circle, okay? It's gonna go in between the back of the shaker and the front or the slider. So you see that way you can put your tooth on here and it moves back and forth, okay? So same concept for this candy that swirls you're just going to punch a hole right here. You're going to put this thing. It won't slide, but it'll just be a hole. So just imagine that this is only a hole. Okay, so it's just like this. So now this will spin around and around and around. So that's all there is to it. It's really simple. I In another video, I show you how to create the circles because, you know, it's not that hard, but it is time consuming. And for a dollar, you can have it and it's always there for you okay and you can resize it just make sure when you're resizing it that you take the whole thing in and you resize it together don't resize one thing and not the other okay all right so i think we're almost ready to get started i'm going to show you creative fabrica here is creative fabrica i'm going to move my face over and make it smaller so it's called the cake topper slider shaker template <laughs> we didn't know what else to call it um but it explains here this is the Again, the top of the slider, the bottom of the slider, you have your foam circles. Now there's two. At the beginning, I was using two foam circles sitting on top of each other to create a really high wall. So it will hold thicker things inside, like 
Sorry, now I'm going to make myself bigger again. These little beads, they're really thick. It does not fit in a single foam circle. So I wasn't able to use that today. Um, but, you know, those single foam uh, circle holds all the sequins and glitter. It just doesn't hold the extra stuff. Like um, I've seen some shakers where they have something like this sitting in there that you will need two foam circles. Okay. So you can always delete this when you go into design space. This is the back of the slider. And this is the acetate circle. So for a dollar, you have it already done. Okay. So you, what you would do is you would buy it, download it, and then upload it into design space. Okay. <laughs> All right, so let's go into Inkscape, or actually, let's first go into Font Lab Pad. Make myself smaller. I like using Font Lab Pad because I do a bunch of names at one time, and it, you know, um, it puts it all together, right? It's all one word instead of like in Design Space, each letter is separated. So I like this. Um, I always do all my names and words in here. So for Charlotte, this font is called Feeling Sweet and I got it onto font so it's free and it comes with an offset, but only one offset, right? And I always like to do three. So I am gonna take it into Inkscape. So what you do is you type out the name that you like. You can switch fonts. So I always have my top eight, let's say. <laughs> These are fonts that I like. So you could see, um, you pick the font and then it just changes, it's super cool. So let's go back though, because this font is feeling sweet. Um, so here it is. All right, so you click on the pick list and you save as. You have to remember what you save it as because we're gonna then import it into Inkscape. So let's go into Inkscape. All right, this is all I do with Inkscape is an offset. I don't know anything else, um, but I feel like it really changes your cake toppers, your banners, pretty much any project that you do. It gives it a more polished look and it, the font then is so much easier to read. And I don't always just do the font. Sometimes I'll do an image as well. So it really gives you um, just an extra thing to put in your bag and say, hey, I know how to do this and it looks good. So let's go to file, import, and it's going to be, I saved it as doo -doo -doo -doo, Charlotte, feeling sweet. So I always put the font name too because I forget what I use. So I always usually put the whatever the name is and then the font. So here it is, um, similar to design space, you want to make sure you lock it, so just click on it. That way when we make it bigger, everything gets bigger proportionately. So here's Charlotte. It's highlighted, right? So take your cursor somewhere in the empty space. Click in the empty space so nothing is highlighted. Go down to your panel to your paint bucket. Pick any color. It does not matter because we'll change it in design space. All right, so once you pick your color, we're gonna go up here. We're gonna grow or shrink by. I like doing it by 20s because I feel like if I do it by 10s, the offset is so thin. Um, so let's just do 20 and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, take your paint bucket somewhere in the name and look, <laughs> there's your offset, right? Okay, so now go back and click on the arrow. Um, click in the empty space so that Charlotte's not highlighted. Click on the paint bucket. We're gonna do one more offset. Pick another color, and we're gonna go change, we're gonna grow by 40. So if you wanted a smaller, so I don't know what you call that, but you would just do negative 20, negative 40, and it'll get smaller and smaller. All right, so now we have 40. Click on it again in the name, and yay, we have it. So click on the arrow, grab everything, and then go to path, object to path. You just have to do it. <laughs> go to file and save as okay so remember what you save it as because you have to upload it into design space so I had already done this I saved it as Charlotte offset so I'm gonna just cancel I don't want a bunch of stuff in there now when you go into Cricut or design space oh you know what I also did the tooth so here's another thing the tooth is from creative fabrica I have a subscription to creative fabrica because 
When you want to do an offset for your images, you can't do that from design space because you can't take any images out of design space. So I do like having a membership to create a Fabrica. One, the fonts are absolutely amazing. They all come with commercial license, so you don't have to keep track of it. Um, and you get 30% off if you use my code. So my code is the useless crafter 30. You get 30% off every month. Um, but again, I love it just for the fonts because design space is great because obviously look at all the images that I use in design space, right? So I'm not saying it's bad, but the fonts kind of suck. The fonts, you just don't get the variety that you do in, from other places. So it's up to you if you want to buy images, but every time, like I always, if I'm looking for something, I just go into Creative Fabrica and I look up tooth, for instance. So let me show you the tooth when we go into Inkscape again. So in here, let's file and import. And I must have a tooth somewhere over here. There it is, tooth. <laughs> so here's my tooth. Um, and you're just going to click in the empty space, same drill. Click on paint bucket, click on a color. Let's grow by 20 first. I always do it in order. And just click on the outside. We only need the offset on the outside, okay? Then arrow, empty space, paint bucket, another color, and this time by 40. And just click on the outside, and there we have our offset, okay? Um, arrow, grab, well, if you do it both at the same time, you wanna grab everything, right? And then do path, object to path, and then save as. You that would have been good. Save both of them together so you only have to upload one time, okay? All right, let's go into design space. So now I'm gonna get rid of this. Um, I'm gonna, all right, let's just go into upload. Let's upload everything. So if it's the first time that you're uploading the image, you need to go to upload image, browse, go find your stuff, right? So for instance, I'm gonna go find um, in my desktop, um, I'm gonna find my tooth offset, let's say, okay? So here's my tooth offset, I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna click on it, insert it. So here's my tooth, I'm gonna bring it over here. Um, I'm going to bring in the name as well. So go to upload. I'm going to view all because I've already uploaded Charlotte. And where is it? There it is. And I'm going to show you how to fix it. Okay. So now if you are wondering where the heck is Charlotte, click on it and you see the position, it's saying negative. Just change this and hit like four it's gonna pop up over here. So it's gonna pop up the X on the X axis. It's gonna go over four and go down 3.412. That's the start of the image, okay? So sometimes when it's not there, you just need to change the position. Okay, so let's work on these two things, okay? So here's my tooth, let's ungroup it. Here's my backmost layer, right? But it's missing the middle. All you need to do is go to contour and click hide all. And there's your tooth. <laughs> I didn't use contour for the longest time and it's one of my biggest regrets. Okay, so this one, go to contour again. You can either click here and go to 100% and deselect this, or you can click on the, on the panel. But there's this one. And go ahead and arrange, send to the front, just so that you can have it visually for you. And then here's this tooth. This tooth, I'm just gonna weld. I don't want all those layers. I just wanted it to be one thing. Okay, and then I wanted a cute little face, right? So the face, um, let's go to images. Now all the images that I wrote down, you need to do pound sign and then the toothpaste is M41917. So I liked this face, okay? And I'll show you what you need to do. So let's insert that image. Okay, and over here, just delete everything that you don't want. I don't need the cheeks. I don't need the little thing. Um, all right, so I'm left with this. But what I want is, I actually want 
the inserts, right? Like the eyelashes and the mouth. So click on this and go to contour and we can contour everything else out, right? So select this, you're left with the eyes, right? You can go over here and just click on things. I want the mouth, I don't want that. I don't want any of this stuff. All right, so let's see. And there's my face, okay? So put it over here, size it the way you want it compared to this. Once you like the sizing, you're gonna grab this, the yellow, hit the shift key, grab your white tooth, and slice. So now there's your tooth, okay? Now, if you notice, what I did with my tooth is I wanted it in black, but I didn't want to deal with these as individual pieces. So just duplicate this. I'm gonna go to contour. You're gonna hide everything because we want the blank tooth, but we want it in black. And now put it over here. And if you go to arrange and move backwards, right? So now it's a super stable thing. It's not like little tiny lashes that you need to make sure it cuts well, and then you gotta glue it down or tape it down. You have a really stable piece because you have a full on black layer in the back, and then this sits on top, and this is what it looks like. Okay, let me make it bigger so you can see. Right, so that's super cute, not delicate at all. It's going to last, it's easy to deal with, okay? All right, so now we have our tooth. The way I would work with the tooth is when you're piecing everything together, with I would grab the, all, of, all of the tooth, go to align, center, and then group it together. Because that way, when you move the tooth, everything, all the layers move together and you can resize it together, right? You want every, all the layers to be sized accordingly, respectively. All right, now with the name. So here's the back of the name. Um, ungroup it. Okay, so here's your backmost layer. And we can just leave it as is. All right, here's our green layer. I don't like these little holes. I feel like it rips the paper. It's not worth it. No one's going to notice. And this is still my second layer. I have a name going on top of it. So go to contour. And let me move my face. And you can click on the little things. I don't want those little things. There, it's gone. Let's move arrange, send to the front. So this will sit like this. And for that matter, we don't even need this, this space, right? So you can click on this one and go to contour and get rid of that hole. No one's gonna notice the difference. And then here's my top layer. My top layer, you want to weld it together because look, it's in individual pieces. So let's weld that. And then now it goes on top. So similar to the tooth, I would grab all three, go to align, center, and then group it. So that way it moves together as one, okay? So we're slowly building our little pieces. Let's just make this a little bit smaller. So here's this. Now we have two, two single tooth, one that's gonna be in the slider and one that's gonna be sitting on our envelope, okay? So let's just duplicate our tooth. And now we have another one. Okay, so let's see. Let's start bringing in things. First tooth, um, that is, what font is that? Popcorn. Okay, so go to text. Happy Popcorn is from DeFont. I love this font. I can't tell you how many times I've used it already. It's like, it's cutesy, but not crazy. So. Oops. Okay, and because it's kind of like tilted based on the banner, I'm just gonna leave it like this. We will work on this once we get the banner in, okay? All right, so we have the first tooth. Let's bring in all our images, okay? So um, let's start searching for things. Um, my swirl ice cream. 
And I love this because it already has its own outline. So I didn't need to create an outline in Inkscape. Okay, so let's insert that one. Okay, um, let's see, what else do we have? The envelope. Now the envelope, it didn't come with the insert with the little piece inside, but we can just do that with the square, with the shapes, okay? But let's continue bringing in all our images. So we have the envelope. Um, what's the next one? The cherry. And More images, I know. I really loaded up on this one, but this is mine to keep. And I really wanted my daughter. She's so excited about losing her first tooth, even though it's months away. <laughs> All right, here's the banner. Um, and I love this banner. I feel like a banner is a must on these shakers. It adds that extra layer. This one's super easy to work with, and I'll show you why. All right, so here's our banner. Uh, we are almost done. We have candy. Um, and my daughter and I, we drive kind of far to our dentist, but she's amazing, Dr. Holden, if you know her. <laughs> um, and we, it's in this cute little center. So afterwards, um, we always go get treats around there. We get chocolate chip cookies, ice cream, candy. So that's why I, and I thought it was just funny, like, oh, it's your first loose tooth from eating all this junk. <laughs> okay, this is our ice cream. And again, this one has multiple layers too. So I really like it. We'll insert that one. And we got just one more image. This is the last one. This is our background. I love this doily background because it's not an even thing. So it really gives a lot of character to your overall image. All right, oh my gosh, that was a lot, right? Okay, I'm gonna make this smaller for a second so that we can see everything. Okay, so here's our background. Do you see all these different layers that it comes with? I actually only use this third one. So go ahead and click on this and delete, delete, and delete. So I'm left with this, this is my background. Okay, let's look at this envelope. Now, I love this envelope. And do you see how it has, it's gonna score this so that makes it easier for you to fold it? So I don't have a scoring tool. So what I did instead was I changed it from scoring, but I do have the deboss tool. So I put that in there and it just like created this crease down for me and it was so easy to fold. So there that is. Um, now, just so that I can make sense of this, this is the way my envelope folded on my um, on my topper, right? Because this is the top part. So then we're gonna put a little hole in there. So let's, oops, let's go to our shape and let's just do it right now while we're here. So here's my circle. Make it proportionate to your envelope, okay? Now, I ended up hole punching it because I also wanted to see like where I wanted to put it. So if you have a hole puncher, I would just do that. If you don't have it, let's say you wanted it like this, you grab this item and you grab the circle. And you know what, it didn't let me slice, so I need to detach this for a second. So let's go to here and detach. Then let's grab this and our circle and slice and just move out the things that we don't need, the slice results we don't need. Oops. So grab this and this, just delete it. Let's group this back, uh, arrange, send to the front just so that we could see it. Okay. So I think it was like this. 
grab these two and attach. So that when we go to our Make It screen, it's going to cut the envelope just like this, and it's going to deboss right where we tell it to on the envelope, OK? And we can make this smaller. But let's say this is the envelope. Go to Shapes, Square, and we want a note card, right? And we want it to fit perfectly. So I'm just going to make it so it's parallel. And then I'm going to ungroup it because it's a rectangle. I'm going to make it. Um, it's a lot easier when you do it um, like even. It's easier to make it bigger and smaller when it's even. So what I mean by that is do this. Grab both items and make it straight. Okay, so then that way your little note card. Come on, note card. Okay, I'm going to make it like this. I think I already messed it up because it's already kind of um, parallel, like a paragon, no, parallelogram. <laughs> so you can redo that, but that's how I would do it. And I would group this so that when I make one bigger, my note card gets bigger as well. Okay, so that's grouped together. What else do we need to do? All right, this candy. I made a back for it, so it has a layer. So all you need to do is duplicate, and contour, I love contour, I'm telling you. <laughs> Click hide all. So there's the back of your candy and the top of your candy. So it's gonna sit on top. Let's go to arrange and send it to the front so you can see it. And it's a lot better if you make it a different color, just so visually. Um, let's change that to purple. Okay, and then again, I would grab the two of them um, align center and then group it so that you can make it the right size. And I did two of these, I did two candies on top of each other up here. I glued them together and then they spin. It's so cute. <laughs> okay, so you have the two candies. Let's look at our ice cream, okay? Um, so our ice cream is, is in many layers. I didn't like this layer, so I just deleted it. Um, I changed the colors of my ice cream. I also added sprinkles. I didn't like these little circles. So guess what? Go to contour and hide all. So now it's a full scoop. Okay, and let's change the colors. Um, this one we don't need. It's the exact same. So we can delete that. This ice cream, let's make it, I mean, obviously you can change it to whatever color you want. Um, and I didn't like that stand. So that's basically our ice cream that matches this over here. Um, the only thing is I added sprinkles and this is how you add the sprinkles. Go to shape, oops, square, and Unlock it because we're going to make it into like little, little sprinkles. Okay, and then just change the color. So you can make it smaller, obviously. That doesn't look proportionate, right? And then what I did was I um, just duplicated it like seven times. And then I went into color sync. And whatever colors that I ended up using, and you'll see over here, um, it's just taking a while to load up. Okay, here we go. So here are all our sprinkles. I just started moving them all around into different colors so that it cut with other items of that color. So I had my sprinkles were many colors and all different textures too. Some are glitter cardstock, some is shimmer paper, some is regular. So it really makes it super cute. All right, so that's our, so let's just put all of this up here. And again, let's group this, okay? So go back to layers, group. Okay, let's see, what else do we have? We have our banner. So let's make this bigger. Let's sort of work with this, this doily, okay? So that's gonna be our size that we shape everything accordingly to this. So our banner, let's send to the front. 
and I kind of had it tilted like this, make it a little bit smaller. Okay, what I like about the banner is look at the, this, I'm gonna ungroup it for a second. This top layer cuts like this, and then the bottom layer is just a full piece that sits on top. It's so steady, it really makes it makes a difference because it's two layers. Um, all right, so let's grab these two again, center it, and then group it. Now you can change the colors here. So let's say this one, I wanna make it um, a light blue, and then I make this, uh, in real life, actually, I made it purple and blue. So let's do that. Okay. Um, all right. So there's our banner. So now we have first tooth. So let's grab that. As soon as it's ready to grab. There we go. Okay. So I would move this banner back to here like this. Okay. And then let's bring in this send it to the front so that we can kind of size it. So this actually looks like it fits. So let's ungroup it and manually place it. Okay, so here's our one. And what I did was I did the S and the T, I made them touch and then I welded it together so that when it cut, this was already here so I knew where it was gonna go. Um, Let's bring down our T. And this was nice too because I made them touch so that the OOTH was one piece. And you can turn this H a little bit to make it look like that. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So this is what you wanna do. You want the S and the T to weld together so it cuts as one piece. And then you want the O, O, T, H, weld that together so it cuts as one thing. So that way it's just easier to work with. So grab this whole thing and I would just group it together. So while we're rearranging the size, right? Okay, so I, are we done with everything? Um, I think we have all our moving pieces. All we have, oh no, 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 we still have this. The cherry and the swirl ice cream. So here's the cherry. When you look at the cherry, it's, it's in multiple layers. I just wanted a leaf. I didn't want the second leaf, so I deleted that. Then I did, this color, I did a lighter cherry, so I did um, a pink, so that you can see the little pink on the inside, and then that's my cherry. So this is still grouped together, so that's good. The swirl, this is the last thing we need to do, and then we can start grouping it together. Okay, so this swirl, I loved it. So let's look at what we have. We have the cone, we have the white, the red outline, and then you have this. Now. What I didn't like was then this, what showed through, and I'll make it really big so you can see it. I didn't like that my cone coming through is white back there. So what I did was I duplicated this one and I contoured it. Big surprise, hide all. So this is a solid color, right? And I wanted it to be like a shiny brown. So I did that. And then let's um, move backwards. I don't know how many layers we're gonna have to move backwards, but or what we can do is let's grab, where's my swirl? Go over to your panel over here. Okay, here it is. We want this to be in front, so. Can I, okay, so I need to ungroup this. And then, where is my, let's bring that arrange center to the front. 
And then let's go to our ice cream and send that to the front. Oops. Did it not go to the front? What happened? Oh, it's this ice cream shoot. Okay, hold on. Where is this? Because we have two ice creams, I know. So let me go find our ice cream. Is it this one? I don't know where our ice cream is, but you get the idea. This one is there, the range sent to the front. That's what our ice cream looks like. Okay, so put that back. We'll group this back together. Okay, now if you buy my the SVG file, um, it will be in, well, I uploaded it. So let's view all my uploads and let's go find it. Here it is. So click on that insert image. Let's see where it drops. Okay, perfect. So let's go down here for a second. Make it bigger so we can see it. Okay. So let's ungroup it. Let's get rid of all the words. So over here in the panel, you can just click on one, hit the shift key, and let's delete all the words. Okay. Now, what I did do, that's I did make a modification to this. There are two foam circles, just ungroup this, and then ungroup this. I wanted to make my foam a little bit thicker. So what I did was I put it in like this. I made one a little bit smaller. Okay. And then what you do is you grab the two and you center it. Okay. Once it's centered, weld it. And now you have a thicker foam circle. Okay. So it's going to go in between here. Now that's too close to the line for me. So I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger. Give myself space. And the reason is because when you're doing your foam shakers or your shakers, there's a tendency for the sequence to leak out. So I like giving myself a lot of room here because after I put it together, I then take my glue gun and I go on the inside, or actually I go on the outside. I put glue gun on the outside, but it's covered because you see how this is inside? This is ultimately, Oh, hold on. Let me ungroup it. So here's my foam arranged sent to the front. I'm going to build this so you can see it. So this is the layering, right? There's my foam. Um, both of these. I'm going to arrange, send. Oh, it's already in the front. It's going to sit on the back of my shaker. Then this. Um, then my acetate layer goes on top. It's going to keep my sequence in, right? And then this goes on the top, top. And I'm going to arrange, send to the front. Okay, and I'm just going to, again, align, center it, and group it. That's your shaker, okay? So let's go to here. um and make it bigger so that it's appropriate oops ah. okay now it's too big okay let's say you like that okay then let's put the name down send to the front Name is like that. That's actually pretty good. Um, ice. This ice cream was on this side. Make it a little bit smaller. It feels too big. Um, my shaker. This round part is up here. 
Now, again, it doesn't matter because when you go to assemble this, you can do it. But I like to kind of keep it a little bit accurate because remember, I'm going to have the candy that swirls. So I want to know like where to put the candy. So let's arrange them to the front. Okay, my cherry is obviously too big. I'm going to arrange, send to the front, make it smaller. It was on top of my ice cream, like right around there. Okay, now I'm going to group these two together. And my ice cream went over here. I'm going to make it smaller. So when I first designed it, I had it on opposite sides, but when I went to actually assemble it, it looked better for some reason to switch it like this. Okay, so here's my ice cream. Um, here's my envelope. Now remember the envelope's gonna be folded. So just try to think of the square. Okay, so here's my envelope. Um, send to the front. And think of the square folded up. So you can still see the sequence in the back, but not the full round sequence holder. So that looks about right. My tooth. Let's send that to the front. My tooth needs to be a little bit bigger, I think. Okay. Then this tooth is really small. Let's send that to the front. And it's going to be a little bit smaller than that because it's going to sit over the hole. Okay, um, what's left? Oh, here. This, this way a little bit. Send that to the front. Okay. Um, oh, and my little candy. So my candy is actually both of them. I'm gonna put both of these together. Um, align center and group it. Okay, so let's put that smaller. Okay, so wherever you put the hole, I punched it in the, in the um, pink circle kind of like right there. Just twist it around. You want to make sure it clears everything so that it can twist. So that's a good spot for it, right? All right. So what you want to do then is you want to bring in a circle. So let's move this out of the way for a second. Kind of remember where you need that circle. And let me make this bigger so it's easier for us to work with now, now that we know what we're dealing with. Okay. Okay, so here's our circle. Let's say it's right there. So what you want to do is you want to grab your circle and your pink layer and see if it grabbed the right layer. Okay, so I want my pink and scroll up to the top and hit shift and grab your circle and slice. That will give us the hole that we want. Okay, let's just get rid of, we can delete that, delete that. Um, do we delete this? What happened? Do we somehow have two layers? Okay, oh, because we have the front and back. Okay, so let's send that to the back, okay. Don't worry about that layer. Now, Charlotte, if you notice, Charlotte is part of my back. So what you wanna do is you wanna go to Charlotte 
and you want to grab just her back layer, which is this one. And then you want to go and find your doily. And I don't want to grab that one. Let's see. Oops. And grab our doily and weld. That's going to make your cake topper really stable. Send that to the back. Okay, now we have all our pieces. What you need to do then now is you need to do all your colors, however you want to do those colors. Um, and I would do it from the panel. What I would do is let's get rid of this one. So that we only have our piece, okay? Um, I would like grab this one and change the color here. So I would do it one layer at a time so you can see what you have. Um, I don't know why it switches like that. I'm gonna select all and I'm gonna move it to the front. And I would just start doing my layers and picking all the colors. That took a long time, but that's totally up to you what your color scheme is, okay? But I'm gonna make it bigger again so you kind of see what you have. So this is basically everything that we made. This folds up. I know, look how cute that little tooth is right there. This is just a piece that, um, that was part of a slime kit on Amazon. So if you go to my Amazon shop, which is amazon.com slash shop slash the useless crafter, I have a cake topper um, category that has everything, including these little things to add and the sequins. But I hope this was helpful. Follow me on Instagram. Then you can see all the pictures up close. But I... I mean, this is just to me so adorable and I hope my daughter keeps it for a long time and maybe I'll document in here like what we did the day that her tooth fell out. Maybe we'll go for a special treat and ask her some questions. You can put multiple notes in here. I just, I love it. All right. Bye guys. Thanks.